My name's Robin Mosley, and uh, I have a, a, a computer consulting business here in the Loop, and I work with uh, mostly clients here. I have a few out of state and suburbs and all. Um, I have done some work with documentaries uh, for clients and training videos, and, uh, and I do a fair amount of video editing as well. What I'd like to do uh, today is maybe give you some insights on how to prepare and post videos to the web and uh, give you some techniques, some um, rules of some to use, and we'll show you, here's the agenda actually. Um, I'm going to spend a, just a minute or two talking about video initial preparation and acquisition of video. And then uh, we'll spend some time here on encoding, which is probably what a lot of people here are, came to this uh, talk for, <coughs> trying to understand how to do this and how to do it right. And then some of the web posting options uh, that we can use. I will talk about HTML5. And, um, and then we'll look at Joomla integration. And so feel free to ask, ask questions as I go along. And uh, if I'm not clear about some point, just put your hand in the air. And video acquisition, I, I mean, we get, as I guess as web designers, we get video from a variety of sources. <clears throat> I'm sure your clients probably give you video uh, to work with. Um, you may have to go out and shoot it yourself or, or get clips off the web or whatever. But one of the challenges, um, just to mention here on uh, your clients, you may your the video you get may be may not be what you're going to end up putting on the web because you may uh, uh, it, it, it may be an hours of video and you only need three minutes for the web or something so obviously you're going to have to do some editing. Um, another um, <clears throat> problem that you'll see uh, like I get clients that do have the hotels shoot the video and they're using cameras older cameras uh, that are the good quality of course but. Um, they'll give you like a tape. And you're probably looking at those tapes and say, what the heck do I do with that? <laughs> and I'm sure you don't, probably nobody here, including me, has a tape player to uh, deal with those. So you have to send those out to a service. And so if a client gives you one of these DV cam tapes or something, you're going to have to pay some amount of dollars to get that, uh, $50 or something, to get that converted to a digital file, which is what you really wanted. <clears throat> So then, uh, as I said, you may you may be integrating not only video, but you may have uh, some uh, photos and sound that you're going to integrate. So you're going to have to decide whether you get somebody like me to do editing for you, or if you're going to try to edit yourself and put it together. And sometimes that can be challenging. Um, you do have to really watch the licensing uh, for everything. <laughs> All multimedia is licensed in one way or another. So, um, for example, there's even the buildings, there's many buildings downtown that are trademarked, and like the Chicago Board of Trade. And so if, if your video or your photo has a picture of that, you're going to have to have permission to post that on the web. And so that's oh, something you might not know. Isn't there like a fair usage exception, like if it's a journalistic usage, or if it's just part of a it depends, uh, and it's the kind of, it's for commercial usage, right? if you're using if you're using it for commercial purposes, which a lot of us are, we're putting out we're we're advertising a company, in most cases or a group, and in that case, that's commercial use, and so now you can like you can post thirty seconds of a song. I mean, there, yeah, there's different things you can do, but if you're gonna if you're gonna use some kind of commercial commercially generated video, photos, or whatever, you should look and make sure you've got rights to put that up or you're following whatever guidelines. Otherwise, I mean, for the most part, you're just going to be asked by some lawyer to take it down in most cases. But you also, but you don't want to take a chance that you get some losses, <laughs> obviously. So that's all I'm going to say about acquisition. I, I mean, you want to have creative content, obviously. Yeah, otherwise it's not, or creative content or some kind of content that really benefits the website, otherwise it's not very useful. Now we can kind of get into uh, a little more technical detail in the video format. So your, 
your client gives you um, a dot mov file on a dvd and you're thinking oh yeah i've got quick time at home no problem i can deal with that you take it home and you play in your computer and it doesn't play <laughs> and so you're wondering well what the heck is going on here well a mov file is actually a container and inside that container are actually the encoded video and audio streams. And so inside of an MOV is a very good example because there are dozens of different kinds of encoded video and audio that can go inside an MOV file. And um, it is very different if somebody gives you something that they created in Avid on the Apple uh, on their Mac and they give you an MOV file versus somebody on a PC gives you an MOV file those, those two are going to be encoded in a much different way. And if you're working on a PC, you may not be able to use, you may not have the coders and encoders to deal with that file and vice versa. And uh, some of the, and, and here's another example of Flash. You think, oh, Flash is just Flash. Well, well different, the different versions of Flash here have very different video and audio uh, encoded inside of them. So maybe to give a little definition to the a codec or a container. So a codec actually encodes your video audio stream, and the container itself can hold one or more of these codecs inside of it. And uh, then a, the media player on your PC or your phone or whatever has to open that. Well, first it has to be able to open the container. And even you might have the exact same codecs for the audio and video, in a .mov versus a .ogg, but your player has to be able to open the container first, and then once the container's open, it's got to be able to decode what's inside of it. Uh, to, uh, to make things even more confusing, you can have a encoded video like H.264 could actually be encoded by different um, uh, organizations, and so even though it's it's they're both H.264, but they might have it coded the standards slightly differently. So you could still have some rather subtle issues. Just some examples. Um, these are some containers you're probably very familiar with. I mean, even uh, when you look at photos, JPEG is a container. JPEG is a container, and it's also the, the, uh, uh, um, the picture encoder itself. And there's a variety of encoding that goes inside JPEGs. But in this case, these are all video containers. Um, and here's some audio codecs and video codecs. And I'm sure you recognize a lot of what's up here. And, and here, you, like WMV, you see WMV is a codec and a container. So <laughs> definitely you're going to get confused. <laughs> now, this may be the most important slide I have because this may answer many of your questions <laughs> right off the bat. And that is that there's no single video, audio, encoding that will work on all devices and PCs, browsers, etc. I mean, this I mean, this is the most important thing I have to say today. Because, I mean, how many of you have put video on the web and you wondered, <laughs> why doesn't it work on my iPhone? And, and I've done the opposite. I put it on there and it works great on my iPhone and it doesn't work in Firefox. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, um, yeah, I've, over the years I've dug into this, you begin to realize what all the, the this, is, this is quite a, quite a mess out there. Uh, basically, you know, if you take, uh, like Firefox is supporting the open source formats, and uh, H.264 is a licensed technology that Firefox has no intention of licensing. And so even though this is a very, very popular packaging right here, uh, Firefox is never going to support it. Well, there's Opera th uh, there as well. Whereas, you know, Microsoft and Apple have, uh, uh, have been supporting the uh, MP4 uh, container format. A lot of us are moving to WebM, the HTML5, and, uh, and we're seeing certainly a lot of the technologies are, are everybody. I mean, you notice the uh, Safari and uh, iPhones, for example, are not supporting that. So this, this makes your job very complicated. We're going to talk about how to deal with this in a minute. 
Yeah, any questions on that? Because this is a very important slide. <laughs> Are there available codecs for WebM now for popular tools on like Python and PCA? I mean, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you some tools for this. I will. Yes. The, the answer is absolutely yes. And some open source tools. And is that what you asked? Yes, there are. So we're going to, <laughs> that was the lead in here. I'm going to show you a couple of um, uh, open source software. Some of you may have already used it. Uh, FFMPEG is very, very popular out there. It's completely open source. You can download it from the web. And it, um, the encoders for this program are um, actually used in a lot of commercial products. and. A lot of professionals use this, for that matter. They're, they're, so, so if you're using this, you're using a decent encoder. Oh, these, uh, I know people writing down, these will, we'll get these up on the website. So no problem there. Uh, Avanti is actually a GUI for FFMPEG. And then Handbrake is another one, and, and I'm sure some of you have heard of that as well. Handbrake is good if you're trying to encode for devices. And we'll, I'm gonna, I'll show you a couple of examples of both of these. I mean, just some comments here. Really, we want to we want to encode our files so that they you don't want somebody to wait forever to see your video on the web, and you want to encode them so that they can start displaying on the screen before they're completely downloaded. And uh, so there's something called fast start that you want to enable when you do the encoding. Um, and of course, you want to take a look at your frame sizes. It might be, and you're seeing a lot of creative stuff on the web, but certainly sticking with 16 by 9 is is not essential. You can have uh, a video that's uh, tall and rectangular or very thin or whatever you might want to do. In fact, I, my dentist I was at the other day and he had a big wall painting video which was vertical and it was beautiful. It was really nicely done. It was incredible. Uh, and then you've got to decide exactly what market you're trying to serve and how you're going to do it. So let's take a look. This is um, Avanti and FFMPEG. Let's see how this looks on here. So you can see, maybe I can show you some of that. So when you're when you're trying to encode something, you see right here it, I don't know why the this does this on my laptop, but it, it's chopping off some of the words. But uh, FFMPEG supports quite a wide range of containers. And, um, and, is, and also uh, Codex as well. You can see there's quite a few different ones there for uh, video and uh, also audio codecs. So you can see this, this program has quite a bit of power just by looking at it. Um, it will tell you, this is a good program too, just to read in. and. Um, read your, your video in, and it will give you, well, I thought I did. It's, <laughs> I say that, maybe it's because I didn't, oh, that's really weird. Um, I won't debug it here. Usually down here, it will tell you exactly what video and audio codec you're working with when you bring your source in. Maybe my source is somewhere else now, I don't know. Uh, and, uh, and then you can uh, designate your destination and, and all. Uh, this has quite a bit of power uh, underneath it. You can also, this is a, FFMPEG is a command line program. And the command line version has more power than the, uh, than the GUI, <laughs> as you might guess. Uh, although, this is really not bad. And for most of what you're doing, you could probably just use this. Yes. What's a two-pass video encoding? What's two-pass encoding? Well, what it does, that gives you a little more quality and a little tighter package, basically. So it goes through it the first time, and it goes through it a second time just to get an optimal encoding. Yeah, just gives you good quality with a smaller file size. Is what it, what you're it takes a lot longer. <laughs> it, yeah, about three to four times longer, yes. Robin, is, it, is the assumption that you've already edited the file, or would you re-encode it and then? That's a good question and a little hard to answer. Um, Did you it, the oh, let me repeat the question. The, the question is whether you should um, encode the file and then do your editing or edit and encode. 
Uh, there may be a little bit of both. It might be that somebody, look, let me give you a kind of wild example. Somebody's got a big red one camera and they're giving you a 4K video or something. I would say, first, encode it to something you can edit. Because <laughs> you probably can't even edit that, that, that video to begin with. Uh, and so it might be that you get a video that's just so unwieldy for whatever re reason. Oh, I, uh, this is actually a better example. Many times your clients, be, and this is because of the video cameras that they're using in a hotel or whatever, will give you a DVD. And that's the worst thing to give you. It's awful. It's a terrible format. It's already been compressed. It's highly compressed. And it's also in a bunch of .bob files. And so now you've got to have some kind of a tool to, to, to put that all back together. Now, and so, and, and I don't, there, there are, I guess there are some open source solutions to putting, uh, oh, actually, actually FFMPEG will reassemble VOB files into a MP4. So you can use this, you've got to use the command line version to do it. I think there's a Linux program I've been using called DVD Rip. Oh, okay. Does that as well. And it'll it'll do it'll put it into a AVI file or something. <laughs> That's what you end up having to do. And I and I have I have gotten lots of DVD files from clients, and it's like I just cringe. You know, it's like this is the worst thing you could give me. And of course, a DVD is not high def either. Yeah. <laughs> so so if you were hoping to put a, a, a 1080p video up on uh, on your website, you're not, a DVD is not going to be the, <laughs> the the right source for you. But now that's a really good question. So once you get those those pieces and uh, put together, you may have to do a little encoding before, but then you put them together, and then this is this is what you would use to finally encode it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some tables to work from as to what you should how you should encode that once you post it up to whatever. Firefox plugin for Firefox. Oh, yes. It has presets for the web. So if you select, you know, on, it'll give you the correct setting. Select the web app, and it's So it's a lot less complex than that front end. It's not as complex, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good suggestion. So Fire, Firefrog. These are just some examples, and you can go pick up the slides on the web. These are command line examples. You can see they're not too bad, you know, for to work with. And this is how you would create, you know, um, uh, these particular containers. And uh, yes. So now I've seen a lot more flags and commands and examples and stuff like this. But this I can simple. always use this, and it will work in some fashion, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're right. Now, if you want to start. Yeah, taking it and, and uh, making it exactly this many pixels by that many pixels and all this other stuff. You're right. But these are this is more of an example for you just to see the, the, the uh, I just wanted to point out that FFMPG is a command line program. Let's take a quick look here at Handbrake. Uh, let's see here. It's got like a little squirrel or something here that I can... <clears throat> And handbrake, let's see, video file. If you look over here, you see the kind of presets that handbrake has are, um, you know, you got the iPhone, the Androids, the tablets and things. Very handy. I know a lot of people use this program. It's very. Uh, you, You'll, you'll pick it up on Google right away if you start searching for this kind of stuff. And uh, it's widely used. You, you'll see that it actually, the codecs it's using are from FFMPEG, <laughs> not surprisingly. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a handy little tool. It's, it's simpler than um, FFMPEG, but uh, it gets the job done. Okay, so our publishing options. Using a video service, which is probably what most of you do, <laughs> and even myself, uh, posting something up, uh, uploading it to uh, YouTube. Uh, and I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some parameters to use for YouTube that may, may be of uh, value to you. Um, 
this is the easiest way to do it, and it's just a few lines of code, and you throw it in your website, and boom, you're done. The nice thing about a service is YouTube takes your video and converts it into many videos, and they're all encoded in different ways. It encodes it for the iPhones, and it encodes it for the Safari and for Firefox, and predominantly, it's going to work everywhere. That is a huge advantage for you. But you also have the, uh, uh, I guess on the downside, you have to sign YouTube's agreement, uh, and there are, you might want to read that. I don't want to go into detail about that, but there are some issues in there that you might not like. Uh, is, is that basically the case? So if you're using an embedded video through one of these services, just embedding it is enough to get it to work across all devices? Yeah. Because the, the their embedded script will take care of recognizing it. Will re yeah, yeah, their script will actually recognize what is on the other end. Yeah. And so this is the easiest thing you can do right here, and it doesn't take much skill to do that. What, what would be an example of a term I wouldn't like? Oh, that you wouldn't like. Well, you don't like, have to go through all. Oh, no, no. I mean, I'll just give you an example because I just did uh, a fundraiser thing and they had some music going because it was dancing. And so the music, obviously, practically any music has uh, licensing behind it. So YouTube recognized the licensing right away and I went in my control panel and it says, you know, you're using licensed music and that sort of thing. So I acknowledged that it was licensed and then YouTube now is free to put ads on it. I cannot stop ads from being posted on my video now. That's one example. Um, there are, I mean, YouTube has, you own the rights to your video, but you, YouTube also has some rights to your video once you put it up there, because you put it on their, their service, and so, and they have the right to put ads around it, you know, and you can't customize that to look at, you know, exactly like you want. I don't know, those are some quick examples, yeah. Like all of these services, they can change the rights and terms at any time in perpetuity, so tomorrow they can say what belongs to us. That is very true. Although I, I've been using uh, Vimeo, and actually I got some like uh, home movies, pictures of my kids I don't want, you know, to throw them out into the corporate marketing sphere. And Vimeo had a pretty good, you know, if you sign up for a year's account, it's like 60 bucks a year. And the license, it seems like Vimeo's licensing is much better than YouTube and some other I, I think you're right. I think that's that. their marketing. Yeah. yeah. They can also watch it. Today, so it can only be seen, you know, whatever domain you want. You have, you have to pay for it, but it's, you know, yeah. five bucks a month or something like that. It's pretty good. For right. non commercial stuff. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. But I was going to say, I mean, the way I think of YouTube, though, is it's really social networking. Mm -hmm. And it's owned by Google, and they're integrating it more to Google Plus. Yeah. So to me, the way to even think about YouTube is in terms of when you want the video to benefit from, from the channel. From yeah, like from you know being on a social network or raising your Google ranking, and yeah. I I just I think it sort of stands apart from some of the other. Other, uh, sure, sure. Services in that way. It makes sense. And, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, do you get around that if you use Vimeo? Vimeo is just different. I, I mean, it's also you know proprietary service that and you also are going to sign an agreement to put your videos up there. But I think um, the, the comment is exactly right that uh, um, a lot of a lot of uh, video people out there like to use Vimeo. Because they get a, uh, because they like the licensing a little better, uh, and so that's true. So the second option here is uh, is, uh, is uploading that video. Yeah, so now you've encoded it, and, and now you got to be more careful about your encoding. Uh, and you may have to. Uh, as we'll discuss this in a minute, but you're going to have to encode more than one file if you put it on your own website. Uh, and then, uh, and of course, you're going to have to have some code to be able to, to view that video. And then uh, you're going to have, uh, well, the options, you may be, maybe you're writing an app. I guess I put this here thinking, too, not only you might be targeting phones and all, but you might be writing an app and you're trying to pull a video up from the app itself. And like iPhone, iPhones are, are very friendly to uh, HTML5, by the way. And so you can, you can do HTML5 uh, uh, video programming in an iPhone app and you can do some nice stuff. 
So I, we kind of have gone through this. It's really, it's really easy. Um, I think we've, we've kind of talked about this all, already, but th these are some of the strong points. And certainly the best thing that uh, you can do out there if you don't want to get into a lot of technical detail. I mean, the other thing I should mention is, well, I'll wait till I get to that, I guess. Oh, this is an example, like, for YouTube. I think this is one of the Joomla videos here. Uh, you know, basically, and you, you all know how to do this. If you go to a video in YouTube and you say share, you click on the share and the embed, and you can just copy the code. And YouTube does allow you to, um, you can resize it, you can make it different sizes. So YouTube gives you some flexibility. Uh, as to how it's going to look on your website. So, nice way to go. Okay, this is, um, this actually comes from YouTube. Uh, and YouTube recommends that you create an MP4 container. Um, you want this, basically, the thing to remember is there's a fast start option in your um, encoder. What that does is it allows it to start viewing immediately rather than downloading the file randomly. <laughs> and uh, you have to wait till the whole thing downloads before you can view it. Um, the audio codec, AAC, um, you can have stereo or you can have surround sound. Um, and then the, the, the video codec, H.264, very, very common parameters, and they work really well. Um, you, you do want to encode your videos progressive. Do not, you shouldn't upload um, interlaced video. You should convert it to pro, uh, uh, progressive before you upload it. And these other parameters are you probably won't get involved with, the, like the color space. But some of these new cameras, well, if, if your camera costs over $5,000, you may have to start worrying about these, <laughs> <laughs> these, <laughs> these other parameters here. Um, YouTube recommends just match the frame rates when you upload it. Uh, and those are the, that's commonly what you're going to get out of the cameras, 24, 30, or 60. Uh, the frame sizes, uh, YouTube supports quite a variety. You, you can upload low-def low video, not a problem. Uh, I wouldn't recommend taking low-def and transferring it to high-def and uploading it. It doesn't make sense. It's not going to be any better. It'd be better just, just get a real good quality of whatever you have and upload it. Personally, I think for 90... 5% of all applications, I would not do 1080p. I, even on YouTube says, oh, I'll upload the 1080p. I wouldn't do it. And the reason for that is I would challenge you to take a PC and tell me the difference between 1080 and 720p on any laptop. You, you cannot see the difference. You, you absolutely cannot. And the advantage here is this is a smaller file. Uh, it's easier to handle, easier to download. So uh, personally, I, I actually can code almost everything with 720. Well, it's, it's an aspect ratio difference. Oh, uh, 720p is 720 pixels across. 1080 is 1080 across. That's uh, right. Down. Uh, uh, down, down, down. Sorry. Yes, right, right. Because this is uh, this is 1280 <coughs> by 720, and this is 1920 by 1080. But in fact, most like this camera of mine here tonight actually produces. Um, Another version, it produces high def video, but it's 1440 by uh, 1080, and so what you what what you get is it has to actually be, and there's a lot of cameras that produce that that video, and that actually has to be reconfigured to look properly. So whatever it is, take take your video, convert it into whatever size you want, and uh, and make it progressive. Get rid of the interlace. And oh, computers like that. I mean, maybe the old TVs didn't like it, but the computers like the progressive video. Um, this is probably one of the most confusing areas where you're trying to figure out what your bit rate should be, because this is going to tell you how um, how big your files are. And, and so I've given some rules, and these rules are some, um, I'm trying to remember where I got this. Maybe I got this off the YouTube site, too. Um, but, but you know, like you can see here between the 720 and 1080, 8,000 versus 5,000, you can certainly make, this is going to be a nicer file to download right away. And so this is a good, uh, this is good. But that gives you some rules of thumb and those work pretty well. Now, if you're on a corporate network entirely and got high-speed video throughout the organization, you can bump these up some, you know, if you want to get some more quality out of it. So 
So, if we go to um, our web server, and now we're going to upload it, uh, I guess you can figure it's going to take a lot of space. So if you got a lot of, if you're going to be putting up a lot of videos, you probably got to just make sure your web server's going to handle it, or if you can afford how much the space is going to cost you. Nowadays, I guess that's not too bad. For the most part, you can get a lot of storage out there for pretty cheap. Um, yeah, we've we've kind of mentioned this. We're definitely the coding for the. Uh, uh, when you're doing your own coding, you're going to have to take into account all those different um, devices out there. And we're going to talk more about this in a minute. Um, of course, it provides, you know, you got complete control of the video, the rights, and everything else, which is nice. Nobody's going to take your video down automatically. Well, I suppose they could. They could call your, <laughs> your web host and tell them to shut you down. <laughs> but so, yeah, they still have avenues. Um, the delivery can be... Uh, exactly as you want it. You can customize it to look like you want. You can get the overlays to look like you want, your advertising, your links. I mean, everything. I mean, obviously, you've got huge flexibility here. Um, and this, but this custom coding could be, um, it could be a little bit tricky. <clears throat> so, fl Flash is where we've been for quite a few years. And Flash had worked really well. I mean, you go back five years, it was the only thing out there, really. Um, and, it, it, uh, and, and today, you may want to design your code so that if it cannot handle your HTML5, you will, um, it will uh, a actually default to the Flash player. So if, you, if somebody's got an older browser or something, it will pick up and play, play the Flash in all likelihood. So Flash is kind of uh, um, the, the default standard. And of course, YouTube uses Flash today. And if you're in a browser, for the most part, you're going to get a Flash file. Um, these other options, you, the video players out there, you can, um, you can buy them. There's open source ones uh, that you can pick up. Um, and I know there's Joomla modules and all sorts of things, but this is, this is not a bad solution here. You can code up your own. Uh, I'll make about just some real simple examples here in a few minutes. Um, now, you may also, and you, I know a lot of people do this with Joomla, and their templates will detect whether they, you've got a phone or not, and you can deliver a different page to a phone versus a browser. And I'm sure some of you have done that. You, you, you know what I'm talking about? Have you seen that in some of the templates or, or where, where you can... <clears throat> so, uh, I, I'll say a few words about HTML5 here. Um, this is where um, I, video encoding is going. Uh, it's, it's very powerful. Uh, they, pretty much all the vendors are starting to include this. It's already in most of the products, out, uh, browsers and products out there. As I mentioned, iPhone supports this extremely well. It's a good platform. Android, to some extent, I think it doesn't have the full capability. Um, you know, I put this in there more historical. I don't know if you remember in the old days we had to have these plugins for QuickTime and RealPlayer and stuff. I don't think anybody does that anymore. <laughs> I, I'm too old. I remember how this, <laughs> what we used to do in the old days. Um, maybe just a few words about how HTML is different than Flash. Of course, we know Flash is a single uh, vendor product, um, and so. Uh, but today, I mean, this this certainly wasn't true true five six seven years ago. But today, this is a this is a big problem. Um, now, with HTML5, every like Firefox and Safari and the iPhones, everybody has got to have this standard encoded in it. And so now, and it may be encoded, uh, again, now we've got different people all encoding the standard in their own way. So you may see some differences. And one of the big differences you can see right away is if you, if you just take and encode a simple HTML, throw up an HTML5 video, it will look quite different in... Internet Explorer versus uh, Firefox. I don't know if you've tried it or not, but it will, you know, be because they're both putting their own little frame around it and all, and it, it looks it, it looks quite different. 
Um, the digital rights people are, are, are will be on the case of HTML5 very quickly here. Today, I don't think there's anything. It's, in the, it's brewing. Um, and of course, cross-browser DRM support and all this. So this, this we got to watch to see what happens with this stuff. Um, looking at HTML5, I'm not an HTML5 expert by any means. It's really very rich in features. You can do a lot with it. It's very nice. And I think, and you can do, you can do things with HTML5 that take far less code than going into the Adobe Flash editor. And as far, and I think it's, to me, it's, it's easier to understand because it's kind of based on the HTML kind of look and feel. And to me, that's a lot easier to work with than, I don't know if you've done any flash encoding, but, you know, it can be a little tricky. Particularly if, yeah, if you don't do much coding, if you go into a flash editor, it's, it's messy. Um, the, uh, I mentioned that already. Yeah, we got to have some coding skills with this solution. Here, here's HTML5 support. Um, and you, like I say, pretty much all the, all the big uh, uh, platforms out there are, uh, are there. So uh, we're definitely moving in that direction. Let me show you this. Oh, I didn't show you this before. I, I put these links at the end of the, the talk. This is on the Wikipedia, but this kind of gives you an idea of uh, containers and uh, their um, containers and their properties. And you can see this is quite a long list. So if you have, so if you get a hold of a video and you want to know more about uh, the coders that are or how it's been encoded and what what it's all about, this is this is a nice little reference page. HTML5 video players. This is one of probably dozens of links out there. But again, here it's showing you some of the, uh, the video players on the web and, uh, and what, you know, the support for it and that sort of thing. So I thought it was kind of a, a useful reference. These are, um, I mean, here's another design issue for all of us, is we're now designing for all sorts of odd screens. I guess we, that's the way it's always been. I mean, maybe it's no different now. But now some of the screens are tiny little things versus big or wide or fat or whatever. But, th but you can see this is what we would have to deal with. And it might be your client may, and I have a client that just wants, he wants iPhones to work, you know, he wants everything to look really good in an iPhone. And so, but even the iPhones have <laughs> different sizes now. So that's, uh, well, one thing that's interesting about the five, if you divide this out, you'll see that this is exactly 16 by nine. <laughs> and um, meaning that it, it supports kind of the, the standard video that's out there today. So 16 by nine is kind of what everybody makes. That's what all the cameras produce. So for Joomla, we can um, we can and we should probably still use Flash at least for the near future. Uh, we can use HTML5. We can do uh, modules. I'll show you a couple of those um, uh, modules and components. We can embed from a service, uh, or we can um, uh, we, we we can use some of the templates or build our own templates that detect what's on the other end and deliver a special page to what we're uh, designing for. So, um, you know, you, of course, you're, in your design uh, effort, you're, you're thinking about things like this. What are you going to be doing? I mean, maybe you're doing a video loop. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of those out there uh, where you've got this video is really just the background of the website itself. And uh, the overlays and advertising and your links and that sort of thing. So if we want, uh, let's take a look at, um, uh, has anybody used all videos? Yeah, <laughs> not surprisingly, it's probably one of the, I guess it's probably the first one that comes up in extensions. Um, these three video, these three uh, module components 
that here are um, are probably the most popular, from what I can tell. Uh, I mean, there, uh, there's there's actually dozens of more out there uh, that you'll find in there. But I've kind of played around with a number of them. I've no, none of them are particularly satisfying, <laughs> um, unfortunately. But uh, but at least these are all these are all non-commercial here. So at least they're non-commercial, and you're not paying for it. Uh, Although you can donate if they're good. Well, I think, isn't HWD Media, video share, or media share commercial now? They may, oh, those may have, there are commercial versions of some of those. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 I, I see. The, but they have, the, all of those, there, there is an open, or, yeah, an open version to each of those. This all videos, if you haven't looked at it, um, one thing nice about it is they have kind of encoded quite a few different um, combinations of containers and codecs. And um, so if you look at, say, I was going to show you the, uh, like these are nice. Like look at all these different video services out there. They're all kind of pre-packaged into it. So not that it was difficult probably to do this, but it's kind of, it's nice to just have it all in one package, so if you're trying to use some MySpace or something, and you can uh, you can use uh, all videos and get it up there fairly quickly. So it's, a, it's decent. It's decent. So with HTML5, I'm going to show just a couple of examples. Um, the doc type is is just HTML. That that tells the browser that you're that, that you're HTML compliant. The um, I mean, this is pretty simple code. Like I was saying, that, that's that, that's not bad. That's all. That's really all the code you need to get a, a video up. Uh, and here's an example where uh, where we're using these uh, mind types over here, and the browser this makes your code a lot more efficient to to put to to, to put the, this full statement in here because the browser looks at the type and it determines if it can uh, decode that container codex and the codex inside of it before it even, otherwise if you don't put that on there, it's actually going to try to open that and see if it knows how. And so that's going to take some time. And so you're, you know, you're wasting uh, uh, seconds there while it's doing that. And this, ha well this happens to be, I guess I put this example up because, this is not a video, but this is an audio file, an MP3 file, but that's also very useful. Uh, oh, and, and if you, <laughs> I'm going to comment down here, if you put a video file in here, using this audio controls uh, statement, you'll play the audio out of the video. Here's a, a, another example. Now this is actually the way you probably w will code your video. Uh, what this does, and it depends, the iPhone will look at this, Safari will look at this, and they'll look at the, the types over there and they'll say, oh, I know how to play this. But you are going to actually have to encode your video in these three formats and upload them to the web. And you have to go back to that chart and see and make sure however you encode them, these are good choices right here. However you encode them, you get, you cover all of those devices. Uh, if it can't uh, decode any of these, you can, I have an example here coming up, uh, that you can put the flash code here and it'll play the flash. So. You might not only have to do those three encodings, you might have to put a flash encoding too on your web, just for one video. And, um, and I believe, some of you may know more about this than me, if you have a, um, a browser that doesn't, uh, isn't compliant with the HTML5, it will actually ignore the HTML5 commands and play the flash. And you can put an image in. Oh, you can put it. Yes, you can put default. Yeah, you can put a default image, or you could put uh, a download uh, statement. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Basically, it reads down to find something you can deal with. That's right. It's trying. Yes. It, 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 right. Exactly. 
this is an example of where, uh, like if you go out and find a, an open source or pay for a, um, a, 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 an HTML5 video player, this is an example of reading, reading in that player and then uh, setting up your video. And these look really nice when you do this. Um, oh, this is this is what you were saying. Here we could fall back to um, just a download of the video. If it can't play these three things, then it's going to give you an option to download it. This is nice. Actually, HTML5 is very comfortable when you look at it. This is, this is nice. It plays the way we think. What's that? It plays the way we think. It, it does. It does. Uh, oh, this is my example of... Um, it, it, it can't it, 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 it can't decode these and so then it picks up the flash and and again you look at this flash statement and for the most part it's kind of ugly when, when you, <laughs> you look at it you know it's nice to get away from having to do that just to maybe give you a couple of advanced features uh, that you can use with HTML5 um, i just show you a couple. There's lots. You'll have to dig in and, uh, and get a book. But in this case, let's say you want to put subtitles on the video. You can do that, and you can create this, um, this VTT file, put it on your web server, and in the VTT file, you, you, you have timestamps in the video of um, you know, where you want those, exactly where you want those subtitles to come up. But look at how clean that is, too, as well. It's, it's really easy stuff to do. Let me show you another fun example here. Oh, put, put it on the wrong browser. I mean, this is how, you know, that those real simple three-line statements I had? There's an example of how that might come up in a browser. And you can see the controls. And this is Chrome. doesn't look too bad. And, and so Chrome is providing all these, you know, all the little widgets and the, the play button and everything, you know. So that's not bad, not bad. Um, Now this one, I, I this is just a, a toy, but it'll give you some more of the. Um, let's see if we start this stuff up here. So this is an, this is this is only a half a page of HTML5 code to do that. <laughs> so it's it's kind of fun. So I mean. It, it, maybe it's, it'll uh, simulate you to, to go take a look at what HTML5 is all about. Because you could really, I mean, it's amazing you could do that with just a handful of lines of code. What's that? What is it? There's one that looks like you. Is, is there? Is something that looked like me? Oh, really? Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it was. <laughs> this, is, um, this is a short film I produced last year. Actually, that is that camera right there in the video. But, at any rate, it's kind of cute, and uh, we've we've got Justin on here too. <laughs> that was you on there. <laughs> oh, that's what that's what you thought was me. Yeah. So we could start up all of these little guys. So that's fun. But actually, I, I personally want to learn a lot more a lot more about HTML5. It's it's great stuff. I mean, it's, it looks like a lot of fun. Um, and you can, I mean, some of the prepackaged players can give you quite a few features, or you can go in there and just kind of dig around and do something on your own. It uses CSS. That's kind of nice because Joomla programmers know a lot about CSS. So that's what you use for your styling and all. So that's pretty neat, too.
I just put up some of the resources in the talk here uh, in one place. Those are some links. And then a couple of books. There may be some other books out there, I don't know, but these are two of the books that I know are dedicated to web video and have lots of gory detail. <laughs> and as far as the future, again, I guess to, to stress the HTML5 is where everything will be up here. Uh, I, I'm sure Flash is pretty much dead. <laughs> so um, uh, this is the way to go, and it looks like it looks like a, it looks like it is a good way to go. It's a, it's a bright future for us. How about questions? Yeah. So, uh, what do you use to store your source of video? You know, you get oh, these yeah. big piles of archives, and you want to save the source a lot of times. But if you get it in 1080p, they're pretty damn yeah. big files. Uh, do you do you, do you squeeze them down and then save a version that you then can use as a source, or do you just suck it up and buy more hard drives? Yeah, I do. Uh, personally, I, for for my needs, I want the raw files, whether it be uh, photos or video. Uh, I I want those raw files. I, I, I don't want to compress them or whatever because in the future I don't know what I'm going to do with those clips. And uh, yeah, I got a project uh, a couple months ago, and you know you get three or four hundred gigabytes of uh, video on a uh, on a hard drive, and that's what you've got to work with. And, and they are huge. Now, the, the nice thing today is that, you know, you can get the small two terabyte drives, and they're about 100, and they're down to about $130 now, I think. And um, you can put a lot of video on a two terabyte drive. Now, the, the big problem, and actually this could be a topic for the, for, for the future too, is um, how do you archive things for the future? That's a, that's a big, big, big problem. And um, I mean, I do put, I put copies, I mean, video is so big, it's not like it just fits on DVDs. <laughs> that, that's absurd. Um, I do put stuff on two live drives. You can store them on RAID groups, uh, like a server RAID groups. You can, um, you can get, and I have one of these, uh, um, uh, like a Blu-ray burner, and you can, you can actually burn a hundred and, 30, uh, 130 gigabyte file, uh, files can be burned on Blu-rays. They're not cheap, they're like 90 bucks to put one disc. <laughs> but you can. And uh, so if you, I mean, if you have, I mean, obviously source material is going to be crucially important to the videographer. And so if 95 bucks for that disc may be well worth it because those discs are made to last for many, many years. And I think the jury's out on exactly what the life expectancy. I mean, the old film and, um, and, and photos that have lasted 150 years in many cases, there's, all, there's nothing in the digital world that appears that will last that long. Or even would we have a player for it if we did keep it. Um, so over the years, uh, you, you, you're going to have to probably take your entire collection and transfer it. <laughs> from one media to another, and that is really awful when you think about it. It's really awful. I have put a, I have archived stuff on DVDs, uh, on Blu-rays. The problem with disk drives, as you know, if you take one of those little disk drives and even drop it from this high up, and I know it from experience, <laughs> it will jar the, <laughs> the, the the mechanism in there, and you'll lose it. And it's going to cost you seven or eight hundred dollars to retrieve that data. It's pretty frustrating. So I don't. That that's a great topic, and I and I've researched that on numerous occasions and been disappointed in it. Where it's going. I was going to chime in. I actually when you mentioned that you mostly Blu-ray discs. Mm -hmm. uh, it works out. I was shooting a lot with mini DVs, doing HDB video, and it was about I think, 13 gigabytes of video. I was shooting on a Blu-ray disc. Right. Uh, so if it was that important that I wanted to keep it, I would put it on one of those. What's the life expectancy of a Blu-ray? That's a good question. If it's that important, if it's my kid, then I would probably put it in a couple places. If you don't have three copy backups, you don't have any. They're claiming, if you get the archival discs, they claim that they're good for 100 years. You know, if you look, but this is the vendors for the most part. But even the independent, uh, uh, some independent reviews have said, 
I mean, some of those just out there. I mean, now, if you would, I just go for CDs, it was like five years. Or something. Yeah. Right. It was a pretty small. Yeah. And, and you have to store it. So if it's perfectly. 50 years, that's probably enough. Yeah. It's not I'm bad. Dead, but, yeah. 50 years is not bad. And you know, just uh, from a, a cheap point of view, verbatims are pretty good. And, and even the, and I've looked up the specs on the verbatims a number of times. I think verbatims could be good for 25, 30 years. The thing is, you've got to take those discs, keep them out of the sunlight. So put them on a spindle, put them in the dark. If you put them on your shelf in the sun, they're, not, they're probably only going to last a few years. If that, you're going to have trouble. Oh, and the other thing I've seen is the people are saying, and you've heard this before, but even marking with the CD, DVD safe markers, they're still penetrating and destroying discs. So, uh, to my important disc now, I'm like putting stickies on them and stickers. It's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> you know, I mean, you really wonder what you know. How do you really <laughs> do this right? Yeah, questions. Yes, uh, I have two questions. Yeah. Um, you didn't really talk about this because it wasn't the topic, but I'm curious to understand. What are some of the video editing tools that you use? Okay. Um, that's question number one. Okay. Um, whether they're free or not. Right. And then secondly, um, for those of us who produce a lot of presentation material, mm -hmm. uh, which is not really video, it could be PowerPoint, it could be mm -hmm. other things, what kinds of things would, would you recommend, like, for example, um, creating videos out of those things first? Or would you, you know, what's the strategy when you're, when you got a lot of sort of like, you know, I see people doing PowerPoints on slide, slide show software. And, uh, right. Uh, so those are two questions I have. One is, one is, what video editors do you use? And the mm -hmm. second one is, what's the best, what's the strategy for presentation type of videos? Video editors, <clears throat> there's lots of good ones out there. And if you're trying to, you know, go uh, on the cheap, um, I mean, there's things like, you know, the Windows system has the, the Windows Movie Maker in it. Believe it or not, I mean, it's not bad, and it works. And just use it. In fact, I've, I've got clients who use Windows Movie Maker, and that's what they post to their websites. You know, they edit it in there, and you can do, you can do, you know, the cutting and stuff like that. It's not bad. Um, if you want to be, um, I mean, more professional, oh, I guess if you want to stay relatively cheap, you can go to something like uh, Vegas. Um, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's not... So well, there's, there's, there's a movie studio version that's about 60 to 70 bucks, but the pro one is 600, so... Yeah, well, right, well, that's not cheap, but, yeah, but you could go with, uh, with the studio... Windows only. Uh, Windows only for Vegas, that's true. But it's pretty good, it has a lot of features. Uh, the Adobe products are, are all good, uh, and uh, most of those are run on both uh, uh, Mac and Windows. Uh, they're really excellent. Actually, I like Adobe a lot. I, I have um, I have the, the Photoshop and I got the whole suite myself that I use. Photoshop, believe it or not, you may not know this, but the new versions of Photoshop do video editing. And you can do some um, nice stuff with Photoshop. Because not only can you do the editing, everything that you can do in Photoshop, you can now do to every frame in your video. <laughs> it is really cool. And CS6, the latest version of Photoshop, uh, you, know, you can do uh, your color grading. And so what that does is you can take, and it has some, um, uh, uh, some grading templates that you can use right out of Photoshop. Better have some interesting effects. But it takes every color in your video and replaces it with another color. So it's, a, it's like a mapping of color to color is what color grading does. Uh, I mean, that's, a, that's phenomenal, really. I mean, Photoshop's not a cheap program, only $700 or whatever, just for that, but it, it does some really nice stuff. So that's an option for you. Uh, I use, for the type of stuff that I do, and I like this, I use Edius Pro, which, I don't know, it's about $1,500. It's, um, um, maybe it's cheaper now, I don't know. Anyway, it's a lot of the, the TV stations that I'll use it. It's, it's very nice, very feature-rich. It, it, it handles all the different formats well, multi um, you know, a multi-format on the timeline. It'll it'll do all the high-def varieties. It'll produce all the code. Uh, it'll encode it in every way possible. And uh, 
I like the look and feel of that. It works well for me. Um, and, and on the Mac side, you've got the Abbott, uh, which is very good. I mean, Mac has, has great, um, uh, I'm, you might have guessed, I'm on Windows, or I work with Windows. Um, I don't think there's, and I, I work with a lot of Mac people, I don't, you, you, can, you, can video, you can do your video editing on a Mac or a PC, and you're fine. I mean, there are tools out there on either platform, and you can do everything you want to do. Uh, I don't know if that sort of answers the question, yep. but there, there are a lot of good tools across the board. Um, and I even use some other odd tools, like there's something called TMPG I use for encoding. It has some encoding tools and some DVD tools for creating the DVDs and the title. Well, this is the next thing. If you're creating something, maybe not for the web, but you're creating a DVD, you've got to be able to create all the titles and stuff on a DVD. The second question you have, I may not be as informed to be able to give you a good answer to. I mean, in, in like, and things like that, there's, you can produce nice video right out of PowerPoint and save it. Um, a lot of the video editors, including Windows Movie Maker, you can do the slideshows and all and put together. I like using a video editor to do slideshows because you can put them up there and put fancy text and all sorts of things in there and then spin it off. It's actually, actually almost any video editor, editor is a nice way to do a slideshow.